In this lesson, I am going to discuss adjoint of a matrix and Kramer's rule. Suppose that we have an M by N matrix and C and J is the cofactor of A corresponding to A and J. We want to make a matrix containing all the cofactors. And if we just list all the cofactors here, this is the cofactor corresponding to the 1, 1 entry, corresponding to the 1, 2 entry, and so on. This matrix is what you call the matrix of cofactors from A. If we get the transpose of this matrix, we define that to be the adjoint of A. Remember, the adjoint of A is the transpose of the matrix of cofactors. Suppose we want to find the adjoint of A and its determinant and the product A times adjoint of A. Let us first compute for the cofactor matrix. First, let us compute for C11. C11 is positive 1 times the determinant of 1, 5, negative 6, 7. So we get 7 minus negative 30. That is 37. I leave it up to you to compute for all the cofactors. And upon doing that, you will get the cofactor matrix is given by this. And therefore, the adjoint of A is equal to the transpose of this matrix. Next, let us compute for A times the adjoint of A. Let us get the 1, 1 entry. We have 37 minus 30, so that is 7. Minus 4, we get 3. For the 1, 2, and 3, we get negative 9 plus 9, that is 0. For the 1, 3, and 3, this times this, we get 17 minus 15, which is 2. Minus 2, we get 0. One more. Let's look at the 2, 1, and 3. We have 0. Negative 10 plus 10, that is 0. 2, 2, and 3 is 0. 3, 0. 3. For the 2, 3, and 3, 0. Negative 5 plus 5, we get 0. And negative 2 times 37, that is equal to negative 74 plus 16, so we have negative 14, plus 14, we get 0. Next, this is 18, minus 18, get 0. And lastly, 17 times negative 2 is negative 34, plus 30, that's negative 4, plus 7. So therefore, this thing over here is equal to 3 times the identity. We haven't computed the determinant of A. I will leave it up to you to compute the determinant of A. Verify that this is equal to 3. The result that we had in the previous example can be generalized for any square matrix. In particular, the product of A and its adjoint, regardless of the order, you will get the determinant of A times the identity. What is this saying? Take note that I can write this as A times the matrix 1 over that A. I am assuming here that the determinant of A is not equal to 0. Times adjoint of A. This will be equal to the identity. And this thing over here. I can write that as 1 over determinant of A times the adjoint of A times A is equal to the identity. What can you conclude from here? This is saying that you have a matrix. When you multiply it, whether on the left or on the right of A, you will get the identity matrix. Of course, the assumption here is that the determinant of A is not equal to 0 for this real number to exist. What do we get from here? Therefore, this is the inverse 
of A. Here, I just rewrote this one to this form. If A is invertible, then the inverse of A is given by this. Now, take note that when I did this earlier, my assumption was that let A is not equal to 0. And recall that this condition is equivalent to this condition. A is invertible. Therefore, this theorem tells us how to compute for the inverse of A using its adjoint and its determinant. However, take note, class, that this theorem is not an efficient way to find the inverse of a matrix. For example, if I have a 10 by 10 matrix, it would mean that I have 100 entries, correct? So I have 100 entries. And for each entry, I would have to compute cofactors. So that would be very, very tedious. So therefore, we do not really use this formula to compute for the inverse of A. We do not use it for practical results. We only have it for theoretical purposes. However, for the next example, it will turn out that we can use this formula. Suppose we want to find the 2, 3 entry of A inverse if A is given by this matrix. Take note that we're only interested with the 2, 3 entry of A inverse. We do not need to compute for the inverse of A itself. In this case, the formula for the inverse of A using its adjoint would be helpful. I have here the formula and take note that we only want the 2, 3 entry. So therefore, I will just get the 2, 3 entry first of the adjoint of A. What is the 2, 3 entry of the adjoint of A? This is equal to what number? Recall that the adjoint of A is the transpose of the matrix of cofactors. So therefore, the 2, 3 entry of the adjoint of A is the 3, 2 entry of the matrix of cofactors, and that is exactly your C3, 2. Therefore, what are the things that we have to compute first? We have to compute for C3, 2, and second, we have to compute for the determinant of A. Let us compute for C32. So therefore, we delete the third row and the second column. And what will be the sign here? This is 32. So that's odd. So that's negative of the determinant of 2, 3, 5, 1. So we get negative of 2 minus 15. It's negative 13. So therefore, C32 C3, and C3 is equal to 13. Next, let us compute for the determinant of A. What I want to do here is I already have one zero entry here. So therefore, I want to turn this thing into zero. How will I do that? Remember that I do not want to touch this. I don't want to mess this up. So therefore, if you don't want to mess this up, you don't want to mess up the second column, we will now use column operations. And hence, I will use first column, I will add it to C3 so that I can replace my C3. I will replace C3 with C3 plus negative 2C1. Get 2, 5, 3, 1, negative 7, 0, and negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. Negative 10 plus 1 is negative 9. And negative 6 plus 6 is 0. I will now get the cofactor expansion along the third row. So therefore, this is equal to 3 times, what is the sign? Plus, minus, plus. So it's already positive. The determinant of the matrix, which results when we remove this row and this column. 1, negative 1, negative 7, negative Therefore, this is 3 times negative 9 minus 7. It's negative 16, so therefore this is negative 48. We've now shown that the determinant of A is equal to negative 48. So going back, the 2, 3 entry of A inverse is 1 over the determinant of A. So that's negative 1 over 48 times our C32 entry is 13. We get 
negative 30 over 48. Suppose that we have a system of n equations in the variables x1, x2 up to xn, and the coefficient matrix is invertible. Kramer's rule gives us a formula to compute for the values of your unknowns, x1, x2 up to xn. So here, it's equal to the determinant of a1 over that a for all of them. It has a denominator of the determinant of a. What are this a1, a2, and an? Note that these are just the matrices obtained from A by replacing the column by B. So if we have A1, replace the first column by the column B. If you have A2, replace the second column by the column B and so on. Let me illustrate this example. Suppose that we want to find X1 in this system of equations. Let us use Kramer's rule. So first, our coefficient matrix is 5, 1, negative 1, 9, 1, negative 1, 1, negative 1, 5. This is my A. Let us compute for the determinant of A. I will turn this into zeros by adding column 2 with column 3. I get 0, 0, 4, and therefore, I will get the cofactor expansion along the third column. This is the 3, 3 position, so therefore, I get 4 times positive 1 times the determinant of the matrix, this and this. This is equal to 4 times 5 minus 9. Negative 4, so this is equal to negative 16. Recall that our x1 is equal to the determinant of a1 over the determinant of a. And we now know that the determinant of a is negative 16. Let us compute for a1. a1 is the matrix wherein the first column will be replaced by the column matrix b. So I will just change this part. Again, I will still get the determinant by using the cofactor expansion along the third column. We get 4 times positive 1 times the determinant of the matrix. 4, 1, 1, 1. So we get 4 times 4 minus 1 is 3. This is equal to 12. X1 is 12 over negative 16 or negative 3 fourths. And this concludes our discussion on determinants and inverse of a matrix.